What's going on guys, Briar Rabbit here. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at two separate mice. The first one being the Corsair Scimitar Pro RGB, and the second one being the Razer Naga Hex V2. Now, the reason for this is because I've recently started playing a lot more PC games. Traditionally, I've been a console gamer for the most part. It's been probably 10, 15, years since I've really gamed a lot on a PC. And what I've found is that my left hand is completely retarded. Uh, asking it to hit tab, shift, control, alt, D, F, uh, R, E, all these buttons, one, two, three, four, five, all of those buttons in rapid succession at the same time has proven to be uh, a nightmare for me. Uh, I'm just very used to having a thumbstick to move around and most of the button pushing happens with my right hand, specifically with my right thumb. And that's why these mice are both very attractive to me because they both have a ton of programmable buttons near the thumb. So we're gonna be taking a look at both of these. I'll be reviewing them, comparing them, and telling you which one I like better uh, very much from the viewpoint of a console gamer moving over to a PC. So let's get into it. All right, guys, now that you know a little bit about me and where I'm coming from for the purposes of this comparison, let's jump into the mice and the comparison itself. Now, it bears out that these mice are actually more similar than they are different. They both have 16,000 DPI sensors, very fast response times. They both have fully programmable uh, RGB lighting and fully programmable side buttons and plenty of them on both mice. Now the differences start to come in when you compare the seven buttons uh, configured in a circular position compared to the Corsair's 12 buttons kind of in a grid layout. There is a price difference as well. The Razer Naga on Amazon as of this review comes in at $66, while the Corsair Cemetery Pro comes in at $80. So the Naga is definitely a slightly better value as far as price goes. As far as the finish of the mice goes, uh, they're both pretty similar. They both have kind of a soft touch plasticky finish. Uh, the Corsair is much smoother uh, and there's no real discernible texture. The Naga does have a bit of a rough texture to it, but I actually did end up preferring the, the, the texturing on the Naga. It's just a little more comfortable. It felt a little nicer to my fingertips. Uh, so a nod goes to the Naga there. Moving on to the buttons, the Naga has a couple of differences from the Scimitar. Uh, and some things I like, some things I didn't. The Naga has a DPS up and a DPS down. So those are separate buttons. Whereas the Corsair, you hit the DPS on it and it just kind of, it keeps raising it and kind of cycles through all the way up and then starts at the bottom again. And that second button actually changes the profiles on the mouse. So if you're switching games or switching apps, you can just click that and go through your save profiles. It changes the lighting effect and the button assignments that go along with it. On the side of the mice, uh, I did enjoy the Naga at first because it was a lot easier for my console-based brain to understand. The buttons are laid out in a circle. It was very quick and easy for me to get used to. It took an hour or two hours to really start hitting these buttons without having to think about it. And I like that. But I will say this, the Corsair took longer for me to get used to, longer for me to instinctually start hitting the correct buttons. But in the long run, I did appreciate that there were more buttons. Uh, there's 12 as opposed to the seven on the Naga. And even though they're laid out in a grid, which meant that it was a little harder to just fly my thumb over to the correct button. Once I did get used to it, having the extra buttons did help me out. Also, it's worth noting that you can actually move that pad that the buttons rest on by unscrewing this small screw with the included hex wrench. Um, and you can actually move that to exactly where your thumb rests naturally, which is a nice feature. Depending on the length of your thumb or the size of your hand, uh, that might be in different place for different folks. With the Naga, obviously it's set in one place. For me, it was actually set a little too far back. Um, so with my palm directly on the mouse, my thumb was not resting in the middle of that. So I really had to back up to hit the six and the seven keys, which uh, the Corsair pretty much took care of just by adjusting that pad. Uh, and I liked that quite a bit. For comfort, I gotta say, I did enjoy the Corsair a little bit better, but I think that's going to be purely personal preference. 
The Naga's highest point is toward the back of the mouse here, where the Corsair's highest point is toward the middle of the mouse. So with the Naga, my the main pressure point was right in the middle of my palm, and my palm didn't actually rest on the mouse pad. With the Corsair, my palm did rest on the mouse pad, and personally, I like the feel of the Corsair a little bit better than the Naga, but that is going to be absolutely personal preference. For software, there was a huge difference. The Naga software, the Razer software, was much easier to use, much clearer to use, uh, but had less options in it than the Corsair. So when I plugged in the Naga, I was up in gaming within a few minutes. I plugged it in, downloaded the software, and within 10, 15 minutes, I was gaming with fully assigned buttons. With the Corsair, I plugged it in, downloaded the software, it took more like an hour to get the mouse set up like I wanted to. That being said, there are a ton more options in the Corsair software than in the Naga software. So it's really gonna be a personal preference here. For me, I just like having it simple. I like being able to set it up very quickly, get going. Once I adjusted these buttons, I'm probably not going to touch that software again uh, until, I don't know, the next time I get a computer. The Corsair is really, that software is really built for people who really like to fidget with each individual thing uh, in that software. Really deep dive into customizing every little bit. You can set up uh, which button is your sniper button. You can have it change the color of the little LED by your thumb if you hit it. Uh, you can change each of the zones separately, the logo, the thumb wheel. There's a area in the front here and then the thumb pad has its own lighting. You can change all of those individually. You can have them do different things at different times. Uh, it's much more in depth than the Razer software, but I prefer the Razer software because it was easier to use. This is gonna be a personal preference thing. Uh, those people who really like to customize every little bit of everything are gonna prefer that Corsair software. The people who get enjoyment out of that are going to enjoy the Corsair software. The people who find that to be frustrating and annoying and just wanna play a video game, they're gonna be with me and they're gonna like the Razer software. So now on to my conclusions. Which mouse is my favorite? Which one is the one that I'm going to keep using in the future? Well, to be honest with you, I don't think you could go wrong with either one, uh, especially for the value because it's a little bit cheaper. I would say that this is a very good mouse and a very good value. And the seven buttons for the most part is enough. Personally, I'm gonna go with the Corsair because it was a little bit more comfortable in my hand. I did like the fact that I can move the thumb pad to be exactly where my thumb rests. I found that to be great. Um, I do wish that the software was a little bit easier to use, but I'm willing to deal with it because for the most part, I'm gonna set it up once and it's gonna be over. Um, the Naga, I'm gonna have to deal with where that thumb pad is for the rest of the life of the mouse. And for me, it was just in the wrong spot. The Corsair is just a little more, little more comfortable for me. Now, for my recommendation to you, first of all, I don't think you can go wrong. The mice are so similar um, that I think if you can get both of them, figure out which one is more comfortable, then that's probably the right mouse for you. Even if you try a demo in a store, uh, just put your hand on the mouse, see which one's more comfortable. For me, it was a Corsair, uh, and that's really where the decision lies for me. But honestly, you can't go wrong with either one. Uh, if you like more customization in your LEDs and in your uh, side buttons, the Corsair is probably for you. If you just want something that you set up quickly, put on your desk and start playing video games with, the Razor's probably for you. So that's gonna do it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hit that like button if you like the video. Hit subscribe if you're new to the channel. And I'll see you guys next time.